Hello everybody, a warm welcome to Wisdom from North. Today I'm in Copenhagen in Denmark and I'm having some wonderful conversations with people. And next to me here I have Rebecca Leva. She is a specialist in mindful, mindful styling, um, color psychology and feng, feng shui. Did I say that correctly? Yes, you did. Yeah. Yes, you did. And she's also a clairvoyant and we're going to speak about that today. And I'm very excited because these are topics I don't know much about mm-hmm. and I've never spoken about them in my series. Okay, so welcome to Wisdom from North. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Sure. And I see that you're very excited about this. You're very passionate about mm-hmm. Feng Shui. Mm-hmm. You, you're doing, uh, you're going to start up with radio, I saw. Mm-hmm. You have web TV, you have courses, you have blogs and a book and everything. So tell me, what is it that's so fascinating with Feng Shui? To me, it's a lifestyle. It's not just about how you decorate your home. But um, to me, it's it's about how you are in your life and what kind of people you surround yourself with. And I use it a lot for self-development. Uh, I can develop certain areas of my life, which I choose to develop through my home decorating, how I put my furniture and what colors I choose to have on the wall. And so it's, it's a way of um, taking charge of your life and push it in the right direction for you. Okay, mm. so it's a more holistic thing. Yes, for me it is. Mm. For some people, it's only how you decorate your home. But for me, it's it's about everything in your life. Yes. Okay, so let's get more specific about what Feng Shui really is. Mm. It's it's from China. It's about 8,000 years ago. Um, it originates from China. And um, it's about uh, human beings connecting to the surroundings and how to create harmony. And, and that's what the, it was, was about then. But um, then now it's here, in, it's in, in the north in, and uh, in, in the west uh, countries, western countries. And uh, the way I do it, it's more like we live in, in the now. We don't uh, have symbols like dragons and uh, the red uh, that they, they used to. They, the dragons symbolized something for them that, that doesn't work for me. So I, I've turned it into something more northern, western kind of feng shui. That's a more new way of, of, of doing it. Yeah, because you studied in uh, New York, was it? In San Diego. Oh. I was educated, yeah. Right, San Diego. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just remember U.S. And I was <laughs> at New York, so that's where I lived. <laughs> but um, yeah, so you studied there and then you made it into your own yes. version. Yes, yes, I did. Because I also... I also use how what we're wearing and how we use colors and and yin and yang, which are the masculine and the feminine. I use it in jewelry and I use it in in all kind of ways where it's not just about the furniture. And and people have um, are getting used to it now because everybody thinks it's only about how how to put my couch and uh, table, but it's not just about that. Okay, I want to speak about the colors, mm. uh, how we dress later on, because mm. I'd love to hear about that mm. and learn about that. Mm. But do, uh, is there some principles? Can you uh, tell us the principles of Feng Shui? Like what is it, w- what it's uh, important to think about uh, when you are going to um, put furniture into your apartment? Yes, as First of all, everything is energy. So everything is connected, like um, all the drops in the ocean, everything is connected. So everything that you surround yourself with will affect you in some way. So if you have a lot of um, organic, uh, what do you call it, um, forms, you know, um, round corners and things like that, it will affect you uh, in another way if it's like more sharp corners that are more uh, like arrows. So, so you, you have to think about what you surround yourself with and uh, also colors, which we're going to talk about. <laughs> and, um, and, and you have to create a way for, for the chi, which is the life force. And it's also around us. So it ha- has to have a certain flow in, in your home and you have to think about that. And there's a lot of things to think about in, in Feng Shui, but I, I use very much the Bagua map with where you... The what? The Bagua map where you... Bagua? Bagua map okay. where you divide your home into nine areas, huh? which uh, each is uh, life areas, love, money, career, uh, family, health. And then you can work in these areas where you want to 
change your life so there are certain areas of your life and you uh, kind of mirror them in your home yes, yes. so this is the love corner this yes. is the family corner exactly, exactly. Uh, and what do you do in these corners? Like you fill them up with love things and family exactly. pictures. Yes, you can do that. But but first of all, if you if if you don't know how to do it, you just have to live with the things you love, and surround yourself with things that give you good energy and fills you up with happiness and joy. That's the first thing and main thing. And also uh, declutter because clutter is like drawing down the energy. So that's not good. So, so how do you declutter? You know, if you have a lot of stuff that just uh, oh. stuffed away in in drawers right. and yeah, so you have to just look everything through and and look at everything and see if it does something good for you or you maybe shouldn't have it any longer and then get rid of it. I think that's a great teaching, getting rid of old stuff. Why you're just keeping it there? It's yeah. just taking up room. Yeah, and it's it's also telling something about what's going on inside of you because if you if you um, it's if, if it's difficult for you to get rid of old stuff it's also the way you are inside and and oh. yeah so you have to think about that <laughs> <laughs> that is so true and we don't think about that but it all it's this whole picture it all is. the time yeah. everything is connected to everything yeah it's what what you see outside is what you have inside so if you want to change something inside of you, you can change it in your surroundings and your inside will follow. So uh, is Feng Shui also very personal? Let's say I come into this apartment and I would put the sofa in another place. Mm -hmm. Would you as a Feng Shui consultant say like, no, it's supposed to be there? Or would you say that, no, that's co correct for you. You have to follow your own feeling about where the sofa should be. Some Feng Shui consultants consultants they they have very strict ways of doing it um, and follow the rules very strictly but i do it more um, with my intuition so i i do it um, it follows the person who lives there and if they love having the couch there i could say it's not the best place but if you love it let's do it and then we can do, 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 do something else over here so the the chi still has a good flow so, so when does the chi have a good flow? Like what's important uh, in relation to where the sofa is compared to the table, compared to the windows? You, you can almost feel it when you, if you stand in a room and you just uh, connect to the room, you can feel it if you allow yourself to feel it. And, and um, yeah, think into it. And, and then you can feel if the chi has a good flow. But if there is a lot of clutter, uh, a lot of stuff lying around, that's not good for the chi. But if you have a lot of things that, things that you love and pretty things and lovely things and not too many broken things, you also have a very good chi flow. Hmm. Yeah. So let's uh, talk about colors. Yeah. Yes. I love colors. Um, first and foremost, let's talk about the col uh, or the colors in relation to what we wear, mm. because that's you know part of this whole picture too. Mm. Like I think seldom we think about what to wear in relation to how we want to feel. We just think, oh, I want to look you know good, mm. but maybe you should think more. How should I feel today? I'm having this meeting. What should I, mm. you know, help myself with with the colors mm. to bring to the world today mm, yeah the colors are uh, goes through your skin and also through your eyes so what you are wearing inside if you have a black shirt on and you have maybe this color underneath it will affect you even though it's not the outside world cannot see it so it also will it will also um, always affect you no matter where you're wearing it if it's on the inside or the outside what do you mean clothes. the colors on the inside i didn't understand if you have in your underwear uh, oh, maybe uh, underwear. red underwear or something and then a black shirt over it the red underwear will affect you as well as the black on the outside oh. because it, it's um, absorbed through your skin as well as through the eyes so it will always be like that and then then if you have maybe a bad day you just oh, I just need to wear gray or brown or, or something and but if you want to cheer up you could wear some happy colors you could wear red or coral or yellow yellow is uh, antidepressive um, oh. actually and uh, or pink or something like that and then you will cheer up it will heighten your energy 
So what colors are, you know, happy colors and uh, what colors are not happy colors? <laughs> well, it seems yeah, obvious, yeah, yeah. but uh, I want it from an expert. <laughs> <laughs> you can almost feel it, what kind of colors are, are cheering you up. And, and, and maybe some days you just need to wear some colors that are not so cheerful because you need to calm down and then you can wear the more calm colors. But the most lively colors, the strongest one is the red It's very powerful, and if you really want to achieve something, the red is really good. And uh, yellow, antidepressive, it's also really good for your mood. Uh, orange is connected to your hara chakra, mm -hmm. the second chakra, and it's also about um, it's it's about um, life and happiness, creation, so, yeah, creation, yeah. and things like that. That's the orange, and the coral like this is also very. Um, It's good color for your for good mood, mm. Mm. and then if you you need more calming down, you could wear green or blue. It's really harmonic and, and easy going. And brown is really connecting to the earth. Okay. Yeah, and black you just it's kind of a shield, and it's good sometimes oh. if you're really sensitive to people's energy. You can wear black, but it also closes everything. So, so maybe not not like a turtleneck, but but if you have something here, skin, uh, then then black will will it will protect you, protect me, and it will, uh, yeah, from other people's energies. You know that makes sense mm. because I feel sometimes when I just wanna, I don't want everybody to see me, but I still want to look okay. Mm. I put on this long black dress and mm. I feel very elegant. Mm. At the same time, I feel protected yeah. and that feels important. Mm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But what about white? Like I'm wearing this today. White and black. White and black. Yeah. Well, well, you have... Um, white is, is very neutral, actually. So it's, it's also often when, when people need to just, you know, start all over again or something. They paint all their, all their walls white because they, no colors. I just need white. And then when they... What do you say? When they get better, they just mm. begin to put in the colors. So it's very neutral. Mm. And then you, you have added the black uh, dots, which is the, uh, the element of metal uh, in Feng Shui. And it's about um, all the mental stuff. It's a lot of thinking and getting things in boxes. And What was getting, very mental? Uh, the, the metal element oh. in Feng Shui. Okay. We, we work with the five elements in Feng Shui. And metal is like when you have dots on your clothes oh. or in your home. Oh, can you talk about the elements a bit more? Yeah, yeah. we have the five elements. Mm -hmm. We have metal, which is the dots and circles and, and white also. And we have uh, the fire element, which is it's the power. It's the red color and it's um, when you need to get stuff done. We have the earth element, which is for the connection, earth connection and it's grounding. And it's brown and yellow. And we have the tree element, which is um, growing and youth and, you know, like you see the plants when they grow, it's like the tree element. And it's like the, the um, what do you call it, horizontal lines and green and blue colors that are the tree element. Mm -hmm. And then the last one is water. Mm -hmm. And it's about feelings and flow and emotions and, and it's the black colors. Yeah. So it seems like it's really uh, important that you know what uh, your intention is, mm -hmm. what you want to have um, develop in yourself, mm -hmm. what you want, what your goal is, mm -hmm. and then choose the right element. So yeah. it feels like it needs some preparation and some work here. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it's, it's a, there's a lot of layers in it. You can, yeah, it's oh. it's something that goes deep. Yeah. yeah. So uh, how do you work with clients? Do you come to their homes? And mm. Yeah, I, it's, it's very intuitive to me because I know all the rules and then I, I work intuitively with the rules and with the person who I have because I'm, as you said, also clairvoyant. So I, I kind of read the person and I feel what, what they need. Uh, because maybe they think that, oh, my love life, it's, uh, 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 I have a lot of troubles, but maybe it's another place that that needs to be 
uh, her turn. Uh, yeah, yeah, because mm-hmm. maybe it's something else it's about. It's not their love life. Oh. It's maybe it's from uh, old family patterns ah. or something like that. So, so in that way, I just do it the other way around. That I, makes I sense. Yeah, I don't just fix the problem. I go into where the problem actually started. Oh. Yeah. So have you always been a clairvoyant or is that something you have developed or that has been stronger and stronger as you have delved into Feng Shui? Because I know that you uh, used to work as a designer and more in TV commercials Mm -hmm. uh, and films Mm -hmm. and now you're doing this full time. Mm -hmm. So has uh, this gift also become, you know, more developed? I think as a child it was really... I had it, I was really clever and I felt a lot of things, I sensed a lot of things. But then I shut down. I think it was too much for me when I was a kid. And then over the years and when I was young, I, 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 I thought it was so exciting that everybody else could do this clairvoyant and tarot and everything, astrology. I thought it was so exciting, but I, I don't have this gift. I cannot do this. And then I went to a workshop. Uh, with uh, clairvoyants and then I I could see how people lived and at that time I didn't know about Feng Shui I was I didn't know anything about it I knew it existed but I didn't know anything but I could see how people live oh I can see you have this picture in your living room and uh, huh. a lot of uh, coats uh, where you come in and I could just see things about them and then I thought okay I need to do this and then I educated and developed it yeah Mm. And you're very into feminine energy as well, and you're talking about the yin and the yang. Mm. And can you say a little bit about where we're headed now? Because I saw a video blog where you were talking about the feminine energy is coming in more and more. Mm. Well, we come from the the masculine energy where it's more like everything is in boxes and we need to do things a certain way. And there's a lot of wars and uh, male dominance all over the world but now I I feel and a lot of people are talking about that there's more feminine energy it's more flow it's more organic it's more like we we are opening to receive we're not we're not have to, we don't have to struggle to do things and it's it's more of an easy way of of doing things uh, yeah because you said uh it was about more being instead yeah. of doing yeah yeah, yeah exactly mm-hmm. It's more being than doing. So actually receiving things and doing things through being. Yeah, yeah. We don't have to struggle to get everything. We just have to be to receive it. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Is there uh, anything you want to say in the end? Do you have a tip uh, that you need to share or want to share with us? I think that the most important thing is to live with what you love and surround yourself with people that makes you happy. Um, and do the things you love. Mm-hmm. Wear the colors that you love because it will enhance your energy into something good yeah. and you will be a more happy person and you can spread some love. Yeah. It's what it's all about. I love that it's at the same time, it's so simple because you should just follow your heart, you know, yeah. wear what you want to yeah. wear, um, sh- surround yourself with mm-hmm. wonderful friends and uh, beautiful house and things mm. in your house mm. at the same time that there is a deep knowledge and wisdom about what has different vibrations etc mm. etc et mm. but i think it's a knowledge that we have actually yeah, it is. it's just we don't listen to that intuition mm. we have to listen to it we don't get stuck in the rules maybe you can know all the rules and you can pick from it but don't get stuck into it because that's also about the new more feminine way of living is to yeah to feel it from the inside yeah oh that's lovely you know get the rules away and be more free and just see let it come thank you so much rebecca thank you so much and thank you for watching and good luck with reorganizing your home with love and yeah follow your intuition and you'll find the right way much light bye bye